And then our third object is the red tape reduction one. It's, it's to promote the reduction of unnecessary regulatory obligations on the sector. Uh, and I'm going to go into a little bit of detail here, uh, partly because the, the government has made it such a high priority. Um, I know it's been a high priority of the Victorian government as well. Um, and when you look at the various political parties around Australia, it's a pretty consistent um, policy commitment that the level of bureaucracy be reduced. So the sort of things that, um, that we're doing, we've created, um, we've reorganised once this object was introduced into the Act. Uh, so we, we reorganised the staff so that we've got a directorate that's dedicated to reporting and to red tape reduction. Um, we chair a whole of government working party that has been set up to reduce regulatory duplication in not-for-profits and we chair that with the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet and we do have a representative from the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet here today. Um, we, with others, have worked on data standardisation. In other words, those of you working in the, the finance area would know that there's a, a national standard chart of accounts for the not-for-profit sector um, that COAG committed to adopting across Australia. And part of the work that we've done, we've funded work to align that to a similar piece of work that the Commonwealth Government did to get standardisation of financial data in the um, commercial and, um, sector primarily but more broadly and that was called standard business reporting. So the, the National Standard Chart of Accounts and the Standard Business Reporting are now um, aligned, the two data dictionaries um, are either the same or speak to one another. But I think importantly the, the SBR has a software uh, product and a platform that enables um, very uh, rapid data transfer. And so it is the basis on which we're able to um, make good some of our, our promise of red tape reduction. So to illustrate how we do that, that is the next dot point, the charity passport. And this actually will happen within government, you won't see much of it, but um, we've done an exercise across the Commonwealth Government and then consulted with the states and territories where we uh, asked the departments what is the core information you require from charities not-for-profits when you're procuring services through them or you're distributing grants to them um, and it's remarkably similar not not surprisingly they're all pretty much asking for the same information so we have um, got that information uh, agreed as the core, we can electronically corral that um, and we can make that available ac certainly across the Commonwealth and in fact because of the Commonwealth Government's commitment to report once, use often, it's required in the Commonwealth um, but we're making it available to the states and territories as well. So what that means, and it's a particular relevance to those of you who have lots of grant applications, once you've uh, you, your details are with us, so we have um, your legal name or your, your ABN, and we do if you were passed over from the ATO or if you're a new charity. Uh, all of the information that's in that charity passport um, is there for other departments and they're not allowed to ask for it again. The Commonwealth, uh, in a minute I'll come to this, well I may as well move to it as we speak. The second dot point, the Commonwealth have rewritten their grants administration guidelines um, and that forbids Commonwealth departments to ask for information that the ACNC has. And we'll get the information through registration and through updates that come through an annual information statement which I'll explain in a moment. So uh, I, particularly I think for those of you who are involved in um, and, and, and somewhat reliant on grants, that'll be a tremendous saving in time. In addition to that, and this is the first stop point, we're establishing, we think it's going to be 25 in the end, um, working groups that are going to look to streamlining uh, reporting across the Commonwealth. We're starting with non-government schools and the Department of Education, Employment and Workplace Relations is the relevant department. But in addition, the two, if you like, industry bodies, the Independent Schools Council of Australia and the National Catholic Education Commission are involved, as well as the national body that collects information on student performance and there's some financial reporting information that's provided to the Australian Curriculum Assessment and Reporting Authority. 
All of those people will come together in a small working group with an em emphasis on working. Uh, we will put on the table the legislation under which they operate their current obligations to government and that's pretty much in relation to an annual financial statement um, and, and the requirement that students participate in annual assessments. We will then compare that to what the requirements are for the ACNC and they are, not surprisingly, um, far fewer. We'll make sure that there's no uh, duplication and we'll use it as the opportunity to, uh, to try and uh, get further reduction of unnecessary administrative requirements um, and then we will we'll, um, indeed we need to then move that to a state and territory level but we're starting with the Commonwealth and um, but you can appreciate aged care providers, hospital, employment providers, there's a host of charitable enterprises out there where we've got to get these working groups going. We have um, to help us in this, this exercise, we have secondees from AusAid uh, for, the, uh, for overseas development. Um, DWA have dedicated, that's the Employment Education and, and uh, Workplace Relations, have dedicated staff to working in this area. Faxi, Faxia, that's um, Families, Housing, um, Community Services and Indigenous Affairs, have um, given us a secondee. So we've got a pretty high level of commitment across the Commonwealth, but you probably appreciate it's just hard yakka. You've just got to get in there um, and make it happen. So in a similar way, we're working with other regulators. The Australian Securities and Investment Commission is a very important one because some of you will be companies limited by guarantee. Uh, and the way that the ACNC has been um, written is the way the Act has been written is that once we are uh, established, certain powers will be turned off in the ASIC Act so that in the future, um, companies limited by guarantee that are, are charities will be registered with ASIC They'll be wound up with ASIC, but all of the regulatory oversight will be done by the ACNC. In other words, they will uh, relate to and report to the ACNC. And the ACNC will provide any information to ASIC um, that it wants. So we're in the middle of discussions with them on uh, developing an MOU for what data exchange will occur and of course uh, some of you would appreciate some of the challenges in getting the two IT systems to talk to one another and to make that uh, happen easily. Uh, in addition, we are involved in uh, similar discussions with the Office of the Register of Indigenous Corporations, so doing uh, much the same work. Now, uh, collaborating with the states and, and territories, you can appreciate there's only so many hours the day, in the day and uh, we, the approach that the Commonwealth took was really to get its own house in order and then um, to work with the states and territories. Having said that, there is a lot happening. There is, under the auspices of the Council of Australian Governments, which is the, the meeting of the the Prime Minister with the First Ministers, the Premiers in the States and Territories, um, there's a not-for-profit working group and there's a lot of work happening in that working group um, to uh, achieve simplification and to harmonise uh, particularly, say for example, fundraising laws across Australia because many of you operate in more than one jurisdiction. But in addition to that, uh, we're working on a one-to-one -one basis with the States and Territories to see if we can get a far higher level of alignment. To date, South Australia um, have agreed to, to close to full regulatory and reporting alignment with the ACNC, which means that charities that operate in South Australia, um, for example, if they're registered with the ACNC, they won't have to register with the state regulator for fundraising. Uh, we will handle that for them. And they're going through a process at the moment of uh, modifying their act, uh, and they are uh, putting it out for consultation within the next few weeks with a view to that being um, ready to be implemented on the 1st of July this year. We are in discussion with two other jurisdictions um, and we've had recent discussions with a third where um, there might simply be a reporting alignment uh, where that state might um, make uh, modify its reporting requirements so that they satisfy the ACNC requirements and people only report once. So they're the kind of discussions that are underway um, and we are, we're taking you know one at a time. It takes time but uh, we're feeling um, fairly uh, optimistic about the potential for progress there. <laughs>